We can graph equivalent ratios by using an equivalent ratio table. For example, in this situation, it says that Dave runs one lap for every two laps that Nicole runs. So the first thing I want to do is create my table. I know that Dave runs one lap for every two laps that Nicole runs. Okay, so for every one that Dave runs, Nicole runs two laps. If I think about the pattern or the relationship I have, remember, ratio tables have a multiplicative relationship. To go from Dave's laps to Nicole's laps, all I'm doing is times two. So I can use that rule to help me figure out all of the combinations of numbers I have. If Dave runs two laps, Nicole will run two laps every time. So the first time he goes around, she'll run two. The second time he goes around, she'll run two. That's a total of four laps. And remember, it's following this Dave's times two. So two times two gives me four. If Dave runs three laps, again, we're going to do Dave's laps times two means Nicole will run six laps. If Dave runs four laps, four times two means Nicole runs eight laps. If Dave runs five laps, five times two means Nicole has run ten laps. And finally, if Dave runs six laps, we know Nicole has run 12 because six times two is 12. Now we've done ratio tables before. What's different about today is we're going to use this ratio table to help us create a graph. These combinations of numbers, okay, create an ordered pair that we can put on our graph. Dave's laps, if we look at the bottom of our graph here, these are our x values. Nicole's laps are going to go up this side. So what I can do is I can use these two numbers to create an ordered pair. Dave ran one lap, Nicole ran two laps. And now I can put that information over here on my graph. In order to graph it though, my graph needs some numbers. So let's number the sides here so that we can keep track of who has run how many laps. And going up the side we have our 0, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now remember, the first number in your ordered pair is your x value. The second number is your y value. The first number always tells us how far across the graph we're going, and the y value tells us how far up we go. So the x value here is 1, which means I'm going to start at 0 and go over 1 for Dave's laps. My y value for Nicole is 2, so I'm going to go up 2 and put a dot. This dot here shows Dave had one lap, Nicole has two laps. My next ordered pair, I'm going to have Dave's laps and Nicole's laps. So Dave ran two laps and Nicole ran four. So I'm going to put my dot here. And I'm going to keep following this pattern with Dave's laps and Nicole's laps. Dave ran three, Nicole ran six until I graph as many points as possible. Now it's, there's a chance that all the values I have in my ratio table won't fit on my graph. Okay, for this one we see Dave ran four, Nicole ran eight. I think I can fit one more on here, my five and my ten. So Dave ran five laps, Nicole ran ten. I do have one more point, which I can write as an ordered pair. I just don't have enough space to put it on my graph, because if I go over, over 6 for Dave, I run out of space to go up 12. And that's how you can use a ratio table to create a graph. Okay? Remember, your first value is Dave's laps, which is our x value. Our y value is Nicole's laps, and we just put them together to create an ordered pair. This works even if your ratio table goes horizontally. Okay, so here's this situation. We know that Mark pays $3 for his school lunch every day. So if Mark buys one lunch, he's going to pay $3. These two numbers together create an ordered pair. The number of lunches is my first value, and the cost is my y value. So together, we can use these values to put a dot on our graph. Now again, I need some numbers. I need to know 
what this graph is counting by. So let's label this graph really quickly. And we're going to label our y-axis here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And remember, because this is labeled number of lunches, this is our x value. Because our side up here says cost, that's our y value. And together, when you create an ordered pair, x come first, y come second. So that's why it's one comma three. So if we order one school lunch, it costs us three dollars. Let's do the next one. If he, if Mark got two lunches. That would be six dollars, because again, if you look at this pattern to go from number of lunches to the cost, we're doing times three. So two lunches times three would be six dollars. That's an ordered pair, and I'll write it down here so we don't get too squished, of two comma six. So two lunches are six dollars. Now let's fill in the rest of our table. If we bought three lunches, three times three is nine. That's an ordered pair of three comma nine. If he bought four lunches, four times three gives me twelve. That's an ordered pair of four, twelve. If he bought five school lunches, five times three is fifteen. And then six school lunches, Six times three is eighteen, ordered pair of six, eighteen. And last but not least, if you bought seven school lunches, seven times three is twenty-one. And an ordered pair of seven and twenty-one. Now, my graph only counts up to ten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on as many points as I can. I've got one lunch is three dollars, two lunches is six dollars. The only other one I can fit on here is three lunches is nine dollars. Okay. Now, one other thing I could have done with this graph is that I could have changed my scales. Okay, my ordered pairs are going to stay the same, but what if instead of counting by ones, I counted by threes? Okay, so we'll still count our school lunches by ones. Okay, because we're talking about every time he buys a school lunch. But I could have co counted my costs by three dollars. If I do this, then I can graph more points. So I could graph one comma three, one lunch was three dollars. Two lunches was six dollars. And I can see how that matches up over two and then up to my line that says six. Three lunches was nine dollars. Over four for my lunches was twelve dollars. So I go up to the 12 line. I'm going to go over for five school lunches up to 15 lunches, or I'm sorry, $15. I'll go over to six lunches was $18. And finally, my seven lunches were $21. Okay? So that is how we can use a ratio table to help us create a coordinate graph.